the tires and light the fires. It's time for 777 Days with Jesus on the Overcomers Wisdom Sessions with the Son of Joy. You are a new creation, a new species, called out of that hopeless darkness of depression to a life of purpose. It is time to hope again. And then I hear you say, Remember to comment, like, share, subscribe, partner and engage during our wisdom sessions. We love interacting with you and our teams are always available to pray for you and answer your questions. Seven days with Jesus on the Overcomer's Wisdom Sessions with the Son of Joy. There are these invisible children, millions of them. They'll never ride a roller coaster or go down an impossibly high water slide. They'll never see a laser show or even a 3D movie. Millions and millions of them. They'll grow up in dirt and dust with nothing in their future but slavery for a minimum wage. And their children will do the same. They're invisible. You can't see them standing on the outside watching your amazing life, just wishing they could know what it's like to have fun like that. They feel worthless. They feel hopeless. They feel invisible. My dream is to make them feel different. I want them to feel like the heavens are open. I want them to know that there's a kingdom that sees them, that loves them, that wants them. I want them to laugh, that crazy, exhilarating laugh that comes from the soul and erupts from the belly. I want them to learn to chase their dreams with God as their partner and Jesus as their king. I want to build a massive, free, Christian Bible theme park and bust them in by the thousands. Surely I cannot be the only one. Surely I am a we. Surely. 
surely I am an us. Surely you feel as I do that children should never feel invisible. For invisible children grow up to be broken adults. Let's do this together. Please, please partner with us for only $10 a month. Reach out to everyone you know to do the same. One million partners and we can do this. It's a big vision for big hearts and a big God. And nothing is impossible for they who believe. Do it right now. Partner with us. $10 for you each month is nothing. But for the invisible, it's a new life, a new hope, and a new future. Partner with us. Share our vision with everyone you know. Share this appeal. Comment your heart for all to see. www.edcc.africa Amen. Hey, listen, if you, uh, if you know what we're about, man, changing lives, changing lives, changing lives, welcome to the Overcomer's Wisdom Session, 777 Days with Jesus. I want you to write down, we have a vision. <laughs> we have a vision. And if you don't have a vision, write it down anyway, because, uh, you know, you do. <laughs> You say, we have a vision. I want to see, like, I want at least 10 people to write in the comment section, we have a vision. We have a vision. <laughs> also, um, this is the second uh, episode, so we're still getting used to the technological knowledge, the technologies. And uh, if you hear the the audio distorts or it's too soft or something like that. You must comment so that we can get it right. Uh, how do you like our new 777 Days with Jesus banner that uh, Diani made for us? Looks pretty cool, eh? <laughs> it's all like shiny and pretty. Amen. So, um, <clears throat> you know, the key to everything is Jesus as not just Savior, because when you become a child of God, I was watching uh, my friend, uh, Prophet Andre, sharing a message. It was really great. He said, you can be a child of God, and you can be a son or a daughter of God, and a child is fine. You know, a child gets to heaven because of who their parents are. But when you become a son and a daughter, it means you've grown up to take responsibility for that house, for that kingdom. And, um, uh, uh, you know, our surname is Jesus because his name's written on us. So your your name, you can put your first name. Your name's Johann Jesus. <laughs> your name's Donald Jesus. Your name's uh, Amanda Jesus. Your name's Julie Jesus. You know, like, and when you become a son, you start to represent that house and carry that house and look after that house and go and fetch more children out there that don't have a home, they don't have a father, they don't have a mother, they don't have anybody, and. When you become a son and a daughter of the kingdom, uh, you, you, you start to act and speak like that kingdom, like your father who's in heaven. Amen. So, yep, it's good to see you all. I encourage you to share, invite people to watch. <clears throat> and uh, let's get into uh, letter number two and have some fun. We are having good times, good, good times. So letter number two of 777. It says, I'm in the courtyard with a friendly man, Uriel, breakthrough, spirit of wisdom. Uriel on breakthrough, have their letters on my back, the spirit of wisdom has a hand on my head, and the friendly man has his hand on my heart. So this is a dream that I had. And the friendly man says, let the spirit of wisdom move your hand as you write this message, Samir. That means son of joy. As we stand with our hands upon you now, angels will stand with every single person as they read these very important words. So I want you to, you don't have to write it down. I just want you to say it out loud. There's an angel standing with me right now as I hear these words. All right. Some of you feel alone. Some of you feel abandoned. I want you to know that angels are real. The Bible is full of them. And it's so important to know that God is always speaking to you. Angels are in the realm of your mind, your imagination. That's where they are. Angels and demons exist in the realm of thought. The, the part of you that's eternal is not your flesh. The, you know, your will, intellect, and emotion is the eternal part of you. 
but your flesh that's the part of you that's kind of like a car you know so your body is a vehicle and some people have got sports cars and some people like me we've got slower cars <laughs> you know but your body is not who you are your body is just where you are the real you the eternal you exists in the same place where your imagination exists there where your will your intellect and emotion where you your hopes and your dreams and your fears that's where the angels and demons exist that's where demons fight to control your decision making apparatus and there's an angel with you right now speaking to you encouraging you to listen all righty okay so let's go so I say, as I write these letters, I'm both there and here typing. The presence of God fills this place with such power that I can hardly type. Every ounce of my being desires to lay face down upon my floor and worship. Open your heart and read what comes now. Be at peace as you read. Not one word will ever contend with the word because it is he who instructs me to write what you're about to read. Jesus is the word okay here we go letter two of 777 now i'm going to read something and if that's you i want you to say that's me it says to the men and women who are as angels laying down their lives for the generation that is to come and to the generation that is to come who will be known as the generation who ushered in the greatest awakening if that's you you just stop it that's me <laughs> So you could be men and women who are as angels, laying down their lives for the generation that is to come. And to the generation that is to come, who will be known as the generation who ushered in the greatest awakening. You could be one or two, you could be both. We, everybody involved in our vision, has laid down our lives across the world, different ministries everywhere. We have laid down our lives for the vision that is to come, for the generation that is to come. Amen. So let's see what today's letter is. Thus says the Lord, I desire above all that you would know my Father as I know my Father, not from a distance as a stranger, but as a son. This is why I taught you to pray, Our Father, open your eyes and your ears to realize that I've come to bring you into our family. This is what I desire most, that you would enter our kingdom with thanksgiving in your heart and that you would enter these courts with praise. My father has an incredible, my father has an incredible inheritance for you. He has it prepared for all his children. All I do, and I have been doing, I've been doing this since I ascended, is to prepare your inheritance for you. So this is a letter to you from Jesus. The things that await you in eternity is so far beyond your greatest imagining that your most ambitious attempt at visualizing what is in store for you would be like a drop in the ocean compared to the reality of your inheritance. But here's the challenge. You can only know the Father if you know the Son. I and my Father are one. If you know me, you will know him. So I want you to write this down. If I know Jesus, I will know the Father. So write it down. If I know Jesus, I will know the Father. If I know Jesus, I will know the Father. It's so important. And I'll show you some scriptural backing for that. But it's, he says that he and his father are one and remember 777 days with jesus the more you get to know jesus the more you'll get to know all of heaven you'll know the old testament because you'll know how to read it because you'll read it through the lens of jesus redeemed from the curse of the law but you have access to all the promises made to abraham so all the promises made to the jewish nation blessed when you come in blessed when you go out up down sideways this one no matter what you touch you'll be blessed you have access to all of those promises if you know jesus you know the father if i know jesus i will know the father the father did not come to earth i did and when i spoke he spoke my word should be on your lips every moment of every day Listen to me, dear friend. <clears throat> I want you to be family. But if you do not know me, you do not know the Father. And if you do not love me, you do not love the Father. 
If you love me, you'll do as I command. For my commands are the instructions that will help us recognize you when we see you face to face. We do not change, my father and I. Our promises are eternal. Every blessing is attached to an instruction as it was with Moses. We said this, if you are careful to do all that I have commanded you, you will be blessed. This is why we have sent you the Holy Spirit to help you and guide you in applying what I have commanded so that you can see the full force of my abundance in action. Alrighty, so you know the Bible says, Jesus says, I'm sending, I'm going to ask my Father to send you the Comforter. Uh, and the Comforter is going to remind you of everything Jesus said and going to teach you new things and show you things to come. Those are the three things Jesus said the Holy Spirit comes to do. So the first thing is remind you of what Jesus said. Second thing is show you new things or teach you new things and show you things to come. All right. And as so I says, this is why we have sent you the Holy Spirit to help you and guide you in applying what I've commanded you so that you can see the full force of my abundance in action. So obedience to Jesus produces abundance. It's not, it's not like a condition where he's being nasty. It's, it's basically, let's simplify it. Uh, you want to know how to <clears throat> make a nice cake. So the chef says to you, uh, step one, step two, step three, step four. Then you say, that chef doesn't want to give me a cake unless I do things his way. Exactly, because he knows how to make a cake and you don't. You understand? So in the same way, Jesus gives you instructions that will produce a life of abundance. And even when you are being persecuted, you'll still be full of righteousness and peace and join the Holy Ghost. There's no greater wealth than righteousness, which is the, the freedom inside of you to be generous with everything all the time. And peace, oh, peace is amazing. I was depressed for a very long time. And I tell you what, to, to just be able to be at peace is such, I feel like the richest man on earth. And joy in the Holy Ghost. Nothing anywhere in eternity is better than joy in the Holy Ghost. Just to be happy. I was depressed for such a long time and I thought, you know, can I just be happy for once? Has anybody ever felt like that? Where you say, if I could just be happy for once. Now Jesus comes to bring you life and life in abundance. Okay, so... And Jesus says, my commands lead to blessing. You can step into that river right now if you're willing to trust that I love you and that my commands are a wonderful gift to you. This is why I've told you that you must be born again. You must be baptized into my baptism and filled with my spirit so that your spirit may become holy. Become obsessed with my commands. Be careful to apply everything that I've taught you so that my blessings may flow without any delays or complications. The problem is that you sit under false teachers who do not focus you on my commands. They're robbing you of your inheritance. I love you. Come to me. Come to my commands with excitement and passion. Seek them out and apply them with all your heart. They are the agents of your promotion, release, and provision. I want you to raise your hands. I want you to raise your hands. And cry out for the baptism of the Holy Spirit by fire so that all the false teaching is burned away and only a love for my words remain. I love you so much. It breaks my heart to see you led astray like this. Please come to me. Amen. So let's chat about today's vision. If you hear hammering in the background, if you hear babies in the background, that is the sound of a growing vision in every way you can imagine. Uh, we are popping out babies and we're building stuff the whole time to take care of the poor and to look after missionaries. So whenever you hear cool stuff in the background, just say, mm-hmm, that's the sound <laughs> of a growing vision. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Uh, let me click another button here. What does this button over here do? Nothing. But this button does something. It's time to get fat. Here we go. F-A-T. Faithful, available, teachable. On the Overcomer's Wisdom Sessions with the Son of Joy. They know what's up. So, it's time to get fat. Faithful, available, teachable. I'd like you to write down 
the words, I love correction and I love instruction. I'm going to read you some scriptures today. And uh, this stuff is amazing. Remember, we, we are doing 777 days with Jesus. And my goal for these 777 days with you is to get you enamored with Jesus, with the teachings of Jesus, with the life of Jesus, with everything that Jesus did and said. And I, I want to, to get you as in love with the words of Jesus as I am, because they are truly, and I mean truly, the key to everything. We can teach all sorts of philosophies, but it's really all about the words of Jesus. Now, in the letter, he said, I really want you to be part of my family. I want you to be a son of God. And I'm going to chat a little bit about what the Bible says about what it means to be a son of God. Because you fight. I'm going to say you a lot, and I'm going to say I a lot. Because we fight, you and I, we fight battles that we shouldn't be fighting. We fight battles that God didn't send. We fight battles that the devil didn't send because we don't know who we are. And when you don't know who you are, you, you have a bit of an identity crisis and you start to take on responsibilities that aren't yours. So, for instance, uh, let's say you start working at a company. Your job description is the guy or the girl who fetches uh, the donuts. Right, you rock up at the company and you're going to get a huge amount of money. All you have to do is fetch donuts and make sure that the donuts are there on time for the staff every day. It's an important role, especially for me because I like donuts. And you rock up. I'm always happy to see you. You're the donut person, the donut guy, or the donut gal. Um, it's, it's a great position. But because you don't know who you are, you think that the guy who makes coffee is more important than you are. And you're kind of okay at making coffee. But making coffee for 20 people and making sure that they all get hot coffee, the coffee person has got some different skills to your donut fetching skills because you didn't even have to bake the donuts. You just pick them up. They're in these big white boxes. You rock up and everybody's happy to see you. Now you start making coffee for everyone. You're overwhelmed because you've taken on this extra responsibility. You're trying to bring the coffee and the donuts. And now you've got a couple of problems. I don't like you because you keep bringing me cold coffee. There's not enough sugar in my coffee. And now I'm starting to ignore the fact that your donuts used to be awesome. Because I'm thinking, oh no, here comes the bad coffee bringer. Because you've taken on a responsibility that's not yours. Because you weren't happy with your calling as the donut bringer. You weren't happy in your assignment as the donut bringer. Because you don't know who you are, so you don't know what to do. So you do what you think you should do to feel special. But now what's happened is that poor coffee dude or the coffee lady who was so spectacular at making coffee for 30 or 40 people is also irritated because you've bumped them out the way because you've taken what makes them feel special and you've put it on your shoulders. And this is the same thing. When you don't realize that you're a child of God, you start to fight battles and take responsibilities that are not yours. A lot of people have an idea of what Christianity is. And usually they take that idea from different places, but they don't take it from Jesus. Where do they take their ideas from? Well, sometimes they grow up in very traditional environments and they're taught that they have to fight all their own battles and they get taught things like charity begins at home and you know if you don't work, you don't eat and they, you know, they have idioms and stuff that are either out of context or not even in the Bible and, uh, and then their whole belief system is, I've got to work for this, I've got to fight for this. You know, they don't realize that Jesus said, you reap a harvest that you didn't even have to sow. So they fight and they battle and they get angry at authorities. And they they just in a in a current state because they they listen to a sermon that said that the, this personal wealth is important. And now their life is about personal wealth and success, but that's not panning out. It's not working. So you start to believe because you don't know who you are and your life becomes all about personal wealth, personal success, or it's chasing demons or whatever it is. 
And you don't find breakthrough in that because Jesus never said it. You don't know who you are. You don't know what a son of God is. You don't know what a daughter of God is. You don't know what a child of God is. What you know is what a Christian is, sort of. You know what a churchian is. You know what, uh, so let's see, um, say hi if you're watching so that I can use you as an example. So let's say you, Julie's got a church and you go to Julie. Um, you know what Pastor Julie says, so you might not be a Christian, but you might be a Julishan. Because you don't know what Jesus said, he's the Christ. And when you know what he says, and you sit under his teachings, that makes you a Christian. <laughs> but let's say you're going to Julie's church, and uh, Julie teaches you to be a Julishan, <laughs> a Pastor Julishan. <laughs> <laughs> and you start to take on responsibilities based on what she tells you, and you don't know what Jesus said, so you just start to do all these things. So you start to push for personal wealth, and you've learned about personal wealth, because that's quite a thing in the body of Christ, personal wealth, personal wealth, personal success, personal success. But it's not working. It works for that guy, but it doesn't work for you. It works a bit for you, but then everything goes wrong. Maybe God's punishing me. Because in your mind... You don't know who you are. You don't know how, what it means to be a son of God. You don't know what it means to be a child of God. So in your mind, either there is no God because what I learned at that church about success and wealth is not working. I'm paying my tithe. I'm giving all my money. Um, I'm doing positive confession, but my, I'm still bankrupt. I still lost my job. Has anybody been through that before? You did all those things and everything still went wrong financially. You still didn't see breakthrough. I certainly did. I paid my tithe, I did my positive confessions, I gave generously, and my ministry activity still failed because I was serving the teachings of man, which are usually good. My heart was pure, but the Bible says I'm destroyed for lack of knowledge, and Jesus is the word of truth. So the, 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 the lack of knowledge that I'm destroyed for is the lack of knowing the word of truth, the lack of knowing Jesus. I don't know the words of Jesus. So what happens is I start to measure myself by my financial worth. I start to measure myself by my social worth. I don't measure myself as a son of God. I measure myself by many teachings that, and many things that Jesus never said. So I start to feel like a failure. And I start to feel like either God hates me or God doesn't see me or God doesn't exist. Because I don't know who I am. I don't know who Jesus is, really. I don't know who the Father is, really. I don't Because I'm not in the family. So I don't have access to the fridge. Well, I do, but I don't know it because I don't know who I am. When you start to get into the teachings of Jesus, when you fall in love with the teachings of Jesus, you become led by the Spirit of God. When you believe in His name, which means you believe in the integrity of who He is, you become a child of God. I want to find... This cool scripture, yeah. In Romans 8 verse 19, it says, For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. And, and it's such an important scripture. Because when you realize, see these people, creation's waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. The revealing for these people who realize that they live in the house of God, right? They've got access to the fridge. They don't have to do anything except listen to Jesus. So imagine this. You move into my house, right? And I tell you, right, you can have access to unlimited internet. You've got access to my fridge. Uh, you know, I don't have a car, but let's say I have a car and a motorbike. You've got access to the car and the motorbike. <laughs> um, just... Uh, make sure that you're always kind. You always do this. You always do that. Keep a nice atmosphere in here. And, um, and don't be nasty to anybody else. If you're nasty to people, then you've made my house hell. I'm going to have to let you live in the, in the outside there with a much smaller fridge. 
So, <laughs> so all you have to do is realize, okay, I'm a son. I've got access to the fridge. I just mustn't put my dirty shoes up. And then I'm going to have favor in this house. Now, that is what it's like to be part of the family of God. And only Jesus can teach you how to have access as a son. Now, if you're a child, do some people say, no, you know, God's, because I believe it, God's love is uh, without condition. So, hallelujah. But now you act like a child. You're a child of God. You're not quite a, a son or a daughter yet. Uh, you're still a child. So you're a little girl or a little boy, but you're acting like a child. And that means we've got to limit where you can go. We have to put a babysitter on you. We have to put you in a cot. Um, we have to kind of strap you in. Because you can't go to the fridge because we're scared you're going to have something in there that you shouldn't have that might be bad for you. You don't have access to the remote because you're probably going to uh, detune and destabilize the TV. You you can't just walk around like you want to because you're going to pull something on top of yourself and hurt yourself. You're a child. So you don't have the same access as a mature son or a mature daughter. Are you learning something? So there are believers who are, they've been saved for like 30 years and the kingdom of heaven still has to handle them like a child because they haven't become sons and daughters yet. And Jesus wants you to come into the family, know who you are so that you can have access as a responsible child, to, as a responsible son or daughter to everything. And this is what creation waits eagerly for, for the revealing of these sons of God who know that their, their highest, their most important responsibility is to make more sons of God. To make disciples, to tell other people, listen, come on in, the fridge is open. <laughs> but while you're a child, I'm going to feed you. While you're a child, you don't know what you should be eating. <laughs> while you're a child, you have to be helped, spoon fed. So we've got a 20-month-year-old a baby. Her name's Ahava. And I love Ahava. She's actually in the hall with us now. Hello, Daddy's new new. Hi. She waves at me. <laughs> yes. And now I love her very much. But if I just give her the keys to the car, at this age, she's going to eat them. Go straight into the mouth, drool into the remote. <laughs> she's got no use for the keys to the car. She turns 11, 12 years old. She says, Dad, I see everybody's driving. She has mom's accent. Father. <laughs> like, hey, call no man father. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But like, she said, Dad, could I have the car, please? I've turned 11 now, and all my friends are doing it. <laughs> Which friends would that be? <laughs> yeah, Tyler. Tyler. I saw Tyler sitting on his, on his dad's lap driving the car. <laughs> Say, so, no, you can't take the car, Alva, because you can't see over the steering yet. <laughs> so wait when you're a little bit taller <laughs> and when you when you can legally go out on the road. And you see, like, then she can get responsibility as my daughter. She'll have access to better and better things, things that require more responsibility. But now, we get confused. That's the reason I'm sharing all of this, because I don't want to tell you why you don't have access to stuff. That's not why I'm telling you this. I want to tell you how to have access to more stuff. The more you become responsible as a son, the more you get to know Jesus, the more you're going to get to know the Father, and the more you're going to get to know that you don't have to slave and work and slobber and suffer to get off the things that you think you're supposed to get. All you have to do, I'm telling you, all you have to do is read the words of Jesus and get to know them. They will work on you and produce within you a desire to be responsible. My favorite uh, passage of scripture in Titus 2, I'm hoping someone can paste it for me here in the comments. It says that things like sin, the spirit of grace will teach you to hate sin. The spirit of grace is going to teach you how to not want to do those things. It becomes automated. I'm, I stopped trying to hate sin myself a long time ago. 
few years back, I had an experience with the Holy Spirit and I was reading the word and I realized I'm not going to beat these temptations myself. I actually have to say, Spirit of Grace, could you please teach me how to defeat this? And then what happens is it becomes a subconscious motor function. You don't have to worry about not wanting to do the wrong things anymore. It's not your problem. You start to, you start to, like you suddenly realize, I actually don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. And at the end of this piece, passage of scripture, thank you. I see Alicia pasted it over there. You must read it over there. It says at the end there that, um, it says, I'm just going to read it over here. It says, Jesus who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So suddenly you find yourself zealous for good works. You find yourself full of righteousness. That's what righteousness is. Righteousness means generous. We think righteousness means you don't sin anymore. But righteousness is the word sedaka, and it means you're selflessly generous. You become so considerate. You, you become so, so concerned about other people all the time. Uh, like I've got a little motto that I, I, I try and get out there. You know, so be so considerate that, uh, that people have to give you the um, they are taking advantage of your speech. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens when you're a son of God and you, you're in the words of Jesus, a son or a daughter of God. Now, well, the reason it, it constantly says sons of God is because it's in context of inheritance. So no matter if you're male or female, you still, you know, there's no gender in the spirit. Uh, and the word son is used because it actually means eldest son, the one who is the right to the inheritance. So you have the right to to the inheritance in your home you you understand your um uh you understand your responsibility and you you understand your power and your authority as a son of god you can go to the fridge you can go to god if anybody needs help you understand that as the righteousness of god your job is to make sure that their prayers are answered that's what you are. You've become a son of God. In other words, you've become like Jesus. If somebody says, Lord, please help me. I'm hungry. You go, hey, my family can help you. And that's what I'd like you to type out. My family can help you. Because you've become a son of God. You're part of God's family. You're one as we are one. So now suddenly, when someone prays to God, I need someone to love me. I need someone to feed me. I need someone to look after me, to care for me. You're like, my family can help you. And then you mobilize the family of God, your brothers and sisters in Christ. And you say, family, a request has been made of us. Family, a request has been made of us, all of us. Are you learning something today? Today's letter when I, I just briefly went over it now because I wanted to see what the title was and I was like, oh, this is cool, man. That the desire of Jesus is that we would realize who we are as sons and daughters of God. That we, it's, it's my family can help you. We don't say charity begins at home. We don't say, well, are you part of my church denomination? That's false teaching. My surname is Jesus. My nationality is Jesus. My race is Jesus. You ask me what nation I'm in, I'm in the kingdom of heaven. You ask me, you know, what family line I'm from, I'm from the family line of Jesus. I'm adopted into the house of God. So when someone asks God for something, they've just asked my family for something. And on behalf of my family, I hear and I do because... I realize who I am. Romans 8 verse 19. The creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Can you imagine how the world will change? How the world will change when the sons of God realize who they are. That they are the ones who are here to feed the poor, the widows, the orphans. 
mend the broken hearted, recovery of sight to the blind, set the captives free, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And all you have to do is be led by the Spirit of God. That's it. That's all you have to do. Be led by the Spirit of God. And when you are led by the Spirit of God, it's going to remind you of what Jesus said. So I encourage you today. I encourage you today with all my heart, fall in love with the words of Jesus so that the Holy Spirit can remind you. Let me, let's, let's quickly Google. Um, Holy Spirit remind you. Okay. Whoopsie. I put too much stuff in there. Sons of God, Holy Spirit, remind you. Let me do this. Teaching you guys. You can use openbible.info and you get all the scriptures you need. I like the Bible. It's awesome. Okay. No, that doesn't. Okay, I'm just going to say Holy Spirit because this thing's confused. See, now you can watch live as I navigate around you. There, it's the top one. John 14 verse 26. But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. You see? Now you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that Jesus has spoken to you. You will start to realize who you are as a son of God, what it means to be a son of God, and then everything will change. You will become a we. You will start to move in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that's awesome. So I'm going to pray for you guys now and then uh, and pray our fun outro and you guys will stick around and chat. I'll chat to you as well in the comments um, and we can hang out a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to pray for your miracles and I'm going to let you know our miracles as a ministry. So our grand vision is to feed 14,000 children a day. We want to fetch 14,000 children every single day. Disciple them, feed them, make sure that they've got food. We're in a very high poverty area in the world. Our main strategy is to get people to partner with us for 100 rand a month or $10 a month. So if you're not doing it, please do it. <clears throat> and you can go to www.edcc.africa to do that or www.overcomersvision.com. Uh, our main needs right now is uh, during the lockdown, we are feeding a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people. So if you can help us, please do. It costs around about 150 rand, around about $10 for a little food pack that can feed a family of three or so for a week. Um, we are helping hundreds of people. Winter is here. We need to buy jackets. Lovey, what was the price of a bale? It's two and a half thousand rand for 60 jackets. No, that's for the big ones. I remember it was two and a half thousand rand a bell for the for 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 about sixty jackets, I think, and then it was four thousand rand for grown ups for that bale. So, um, yeah. So we need to get a lot of jackets for a lot of kids. It's uh, winter is brutal. It's it's really a cold winter, and we're just going into winter now. So we realized with the 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 food packs. Um, we're handing out, we want to start handing out jackets. So if you can help us, please do. We need to raise as much money as we possibly can. Um, currently, our goal, uh, praise God, we're almost there for this month's 50,000 Rand. Um, so thank you so much. <laughs> Sarah says, my family can help you. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone. You are so wonderful. God bless you all. Okay, so let's pray for you guys. Um, and then also put on our prayer, your prayer list that we need a bus. We can buy a bus for 300,000 rand, and then we can fetch uh, 45 kids with that bus, and then we're going to keep buying buses after that, keep fetching kids every single day, and people in old-age homes. We're going to help prisoners. Yeah, so please help us. Uh, right? So so I think we're closing in on, it's it's like, I don't know what 50,000 rand is. It's $2,000. I think we need another 500 or whatever dollars or more. I don't know. You can work it out yourself, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you. I don't want to fight with you guys. Um, God bless you. <laughs> okay, let's pray for you guys, and then uh, we can hang out a bit. Amen. So, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, wherever you are, across time and space, whether you are listening live, whether you're in the room with us now, or you're 
listening to this two weeks or 10 years from now, and you're in a different nation. We are joining our faith to yours, like the faith of the centurion, and we are going to release a miracle in your life. The power of Jesus is real. Miracles are real. I want you to lay your hand on whatever area it is in your body that is sick or in pain. If your neck is sore, put your hand on your neck or your foot or your back or whatever it is. If you're feeling nauseous, just put your hand on your chest. If you're struggling in any area, whatever it is, put your hand there. And I want you to be zealous about it. Put it hard. Put the pressure there. Put both your hands on, a, on an area. Remember, this, the, the fervent prayer of the righteous man gets things done. You need to be fervent so that your faith is fervent. Okay, here we go. So I speak to that sickness and that pain in your body. I join my faith to yours. And we declare, in the name of Jesus, you are healed right now. Pain, go. Healing, come. <laughs> thank you father for healing and relief from pain in jesus name and if it's a wisdom issue that you you your posture is bad or you're not walking or running enough you're not you're eating too much rubbish i pray that the holy spirit will just give you the strength to eat things that bring healing in your body or rather just stop eating things that are poisoning you and for those of you struggling with depression and anxiety, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that peace would settle upon you, joy would fill you. I pray right now that a seed of hope would land in your spirit. And some of you, you don't quite know Jesus yet. And I encourage you, just stick around. I've got a kind of an altar call that I play it's like 10 minutes long and it explains to you why Jesus came to earth. Because sometimes you don't know why he came to give you life, life in abundance, eternal life. And you don't know how, you don't know why. We are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The more knowledge you get about Jesus, the better your life is going to be. I'm telling you, he knows how to bring peace to you. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're struggling financially... I pray right now in the name of Jesus for open heavens of wisdom, knowledge, understanding. I pray for ideas for you. I pray for favor with suppliers, good prices if you're going to buy things. I pray, pray for favor with customers that people will just bless you. They just want to work with you. If you're in ministry, I pray that the heavens would open above your ministry. That people will be generous towards you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Ha, le, lu, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So stick around. Uh, I'll chat with you guys in the comments. And uh, I'm really, really blessed. Today's our second episode. And I'm so blessed to be able to hang out with such cool people. And uh, make sure that you say hello. If it's your first time listening, make sure that you say hi, everyone. And everybody is here to chat with you and hang out with you and help you make new friends. Jesus loves you very, very much. Listening to 777 Days with Jesus on the Overcomer's Wisdom Sessions with the Son of Joy. Remember to share if you care and get the good news out there. Freely you have received, now freely give. Send this wisdom session to a friend in a personal message. Share it on your social media platforms. Play it to everyone you know. Sharing is caring. In our hearts, Lord, in this nation, awakening, holy spirit, we deep.
Upside down. Listen daily so that you may learn to love, laugh, and lift others up. And nothing will be impossible for you. You've been listening to 777 Days with Jesus on the Overcomer's Wisdom Sessions with the Son of Joy. If you enjoyed today's Wisdom Session, remember to like, share, comment, follow, subscribe, and partner with us so that more ears can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ daily. For more awesome messages and tons of free content, 
Head to overcomersvision.com. You are not a victim. You are not just a survivor. You are an overcomer. Join us daily on the Overcomers Wisdom Sessions for inspiration, motivation, and practical biblical wisdom. It's drastically changed my life. What does the gospel mean to you? The gospel to me is like love, like the greatest like love story ever told. Gospel, what it means to me is freedom, hope, salvation. You're listening to the Overcomers Wisdom Sessions with the Son of Joy. Friends, let's spend a few minutes talking about why Jesus came to earth. In John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says that God loved us so much that He gave His only Son. He has the purpose so that He who believes would not perish but have eternal life. In John 10 verse 10, Jesus says that the reason He came to earth was to bring fullness of life. In John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Fullness of life, friends. Not just in this life, but eternally. Fullness of life means operating at your maximum potential as a being who has been created in the image of God, experiencing the limits of your created purpose, and expanding those limits beyond anything that you can imagine. Jesus came to remove the limits of your guilt, your shame, your insecurities, your upbringing, your failures, your limited thinking, and every curse that the patterns of the world has produced in you. In Hosea 4 verse 6, it says, The root of destruction in our lives is due to a lack of knowledge not an evil heart not a lack of good intention lack of knowledge in 2 corinthians 4 verse 1 it says that the god of this age who is satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot recognize the teachings of jesus as the light that can save them you see The enemy works hard to keep you blind to your purpose, blind to your potential, and blind to your power to be a child of God by keeping you away from the teachings of Jesus. In John chapter 8 verse 32, Jesus says that you'll be set free by His truth. In John 18 verse 37, it says that anyone on the side of truth listens to Jesus. Remember, we're talking about Jesus the key to your full life so john 1 verse 1 calls jesus the word john 14 verse 6 says that the word became flesh and walked among us jesus is literally truth his words his teachings his actions are the truth that will lead you to live your life to the fullest of your created potential 1 thessalonians 5 verse 10 says that he died so that you could live. You see what this is all about? Fullness of life, dear friend. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says that God has plans for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. James 1 verse 17 says that every good and perfect gift is from the Father. James 1 verse 18 says that He chose to give us birth. Now this is important. Birth through the word of truth. So the access to this new fullness of life is through being birthed into the word of truth. Who's Jesus? The teachings of Jesus. And this is what it means to be born again, friends. This is what it means to have access to every good gift from the Father. In John 3 verse 3, Jesus says that unless we're born again, we will not even see the kingdom of heaven. We won't be able to see this kingdom of righteousness and peace and join the Holy Spirit. We'll see everything else. We'll see bitterness and anger and everything that's wrong with the world and everything that's wrong with ourselves and everything that's wrong with everybody else. But we won't see righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit because you you can't even see it until you are born in truth. It's this new mind that produces the fullness of life that Jesus comes to bring us. 
We're born again by rejecting what we once accepted as truth and becoming new creatures through the renewing of our minds, washing our minds with the teachings of Jesus. Because He's the only one that can bring fullness of life. Okay, so let's take a moment to talk about what you are and what the truth of Jesus will reveal in you. You are an eternal being. You were not made in the image of anything created by God. You were made in the image of God Himself. God created space, time, and matter. And this body, yep, it's made up of space, time, and matter. But none of those things can measure Him. And none of it can measure you. Not the true you. Not the part of you that was created in His image. God existed before space, time, and matter. Think about it. You were created in the image of a being who existed before creation. The true you is the invisible, eternal spirit. Your will, your thoughts, your emotions, your imagination, your hopes, your dreams, your thought life. The part of you that nobody but God can see or understand. This is who you are. No human alive can ever even remotely understand your potential. No tools utilized to measure space, time, or matter can measure the invisible you. <laughs> Ooh, come on now. The part of you that nobody but God can see or understand, this is who you are. No human alive can ever remotely understand your potential. Only God can do that. Only God knows who you truly are and what you are truly capable of. Your body is just where you are, but your eternal soul, that's who you are. And that is the part of you that becomes born anew. The part of you that thinks and feels and makes decisions. That is the part of you that Jesus came to save. So that you no longer think like an animal, driven by the self-preservation instincts of the temporary flesh. There might be a lot of hell around you, but that does not mean that hell has any right to live inside of you. You are full of the light. Darkness runs away from you, not towards you. You think and live like an eternal child of the living God, selfless, generous, peaceful and happy. Easily putting others first because you are secure in who you are and you are secure in whose you are. Jesus comes so that you might live to your fullest potential as an eternal being, a son of God with full rights to everything that Jesus bought for you. All you have to do is believe. In John 1 verse 12, it says that those who believe in His name, who believe what He teaches is true, have been given the power to become sons of God. The key to your fulfilled destiny is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God so that you may believe Him and become like Him. And so we encourage you to accept Jesus as your Savior, your Teacher and your Lord. Sit at His feet as an eager student, no longer concerned about your own failings or the failings of those who came before you. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming the curse for us. He's the teacher who takes the punishment that the students deserve so that they may study his teachings without the burdens of guilt and condemnation. Throw your life into the teachings of Jesus. Listen to the teachings of Jesus. Make his words the cornerstone of your life and everything will change for you. His words empower you to live a life as selfless and as free from the limitations of fear and greed as Jesus himself. His words create within you the ability to say, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. Tune in to our wisdom sessions daily. Listen to the words of Jesus on your own as much as you can. The teachings of Jesus will unlock abilities within you that you could never imagine. Pray this prayer after me and do it as much as possible, as often as possible. Father, thank you for giving us your son Jesus so that we may have eternal life. 
I declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and I am his willing disciple, eager for correction and instruction. I am an eager student sitting at his feet daily, listening to his words daily. I am a willing servant, eager to do the will of my master so that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. I believe, I believe, I believe, I am a child of God. I am obedient to his teachings, so the devil is obligated to flee from me. I am redeemed from every curse, and I have access to every blessing promised to Abraham. I recognize that the teachings of Jesus are the key to my fulfilled potential in every area of my life. I have the spirit of the sons of Issachar, efficient in technology, efficient in wisdom, efficient in winning battles. I am filled with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord. Nothing is impossible for me because I believe in Jesus. Amen. Pray this prayer daily. Listen to these sessions daily. Listen to the words of Jesus daily. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. Hebrews 3 verse 12 to 19. Revelation 2 verse 4 to 5. Matthew 24 verse 10 to 13. And many other scriptures say that it is possible to fall away from your faith and end up back in the destructive plan of the devil. 2 Peter 2 verse 20 to 22 says that you become like a dog going back to its own vomit. So stay in the words of Jesus. In Him we live and move and have our being. His word is alive and active. Be a disciple of the teachings of Jesus. Make disciples who love the words of Jesus. Prioritize the poor, the broken, and the unwanted. Surround yourself with everything that Jesus loves. Be a vessel of light in this dark world and live your fullest heavenly potential as one who has been sent by heaven to bring freedom to every captive. Across space and time, wherever you are and whenever you are, the Overcomer's Wisdom Sessions will build your faith, increase your wisdom, and keep you locked onto your assignment. Just keep listening daily.